Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about the importance of firewall logs to security analysts and incident responders. I'll walk you through why firewall logs are important, and then we'll practice reviewing two firewall log entries together. Firewalls and network devices are on the front lines of security, and their logs contain important information for security professionals. These logs are useful when you're investigating security incidents, troubleshooting network issues, and monitoring for suspicious activity. Firewall logs are one of the richest possible sources of information. When they're configured properly, firewalls create log entries for each and every connection attempted on a network, whether it was allowed or denied. Those log entries contain quite a bit of useful information, including details about each attempted connection that include the source and destination ports and IP addresses, a timestamp indicating when the connection took place, and the identity of the firewall rule that either authorized or denied the connection. Now let's think about some scenarios where these logs might be very useful. First, in the aftermath of a security incident, logs may show all of the connections attempted on a network. This likely includes the connections used by the attack perpetrators, and they can be useful in identifying the method used to wage the attack and possibly provide information about the identity of the perpetrator. Second, if a service experiences connectivity issues, these logs can help determine whether the firewall was the source of those issues. Administrators can search the firewall logs for denied connections involving the problematic system and see if the service might require additional firewall rules to function properly. Finally, during routine security monitoring, administrators can analyze firewall logs for anomalous connections that differ from past patterns of activity and require further investigation. Okay, so now you know why firewall logs are important, but I know what you really want is some hands-on experience analyzing real firewall logs. I'll show you a couple of examples, but before we get into those, I want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. Let's take a look at two different examples of firewall log entries and figure out what they mean. Now, these logs might look confusing at first, but they're pretty straightforward to interpret once you get the hang of it. Here's the first log entry. Let's walk through each section of this log entry. First, we have the timestamp of the event, representing the date and the precise time when the log entry was created. This specific timestamp tells us that the event occurred on October 23, 2023, at 9.31 and 42 seconds. Now remember, the system is recording these timestamps using its own clock, so we'll need to know how our system clock is set to interpret this time. This might be local time, or it might be in universal or Zulu time. Next, we have a keyword indicating the outcome of the firewall rule processing. Allow means that the traffic or data packet met the conditions of the firewall rule set to permit this kind of traffic, and as such, the firewall allowed the traffic to pass through. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. TCP is one of the main protocols in the IP suite, and it's used for sending packets of data across a network in a reliable way. The mention of TCP here tells us that the network communication for this log entry was done using the TCP protocol, which ensures delivery of a complete set of data. SRC stands for Source, indicating where the data packet came from. It consists of an IP address and a port number. In this case, 10.0.0.27 is the source IP address, and 56144 is the port from which the data packet was sent. That port is an ephemeral port automatically selected for a particular session by the source device. DST stands for destination, indicating where the data is going. Like the source, the destination consists of an IP address and a port number. Here, 10.0.2.30 is the destination IP address, and 443 is the destination port. Port 443 is the standard port for HTTPS traffic used for secure web browsing. Next, we have the identifier of the specific rule that was triggered in the firewall's configuration. 
The HTTPS inbound rule, suggested by its name, specifies conditions for inbound HTTPS traffic. The next field indicates the size of the data packet that the firewall processed. Here it's noted as 2048B, which means that the data packet was 2048 bytes in size. And finally, we have the TCP flags. These tell us that the packet corresponding to this log entry had the ACK flag set and did not have the SIN or FIN flag set. Now let's try another one. Here's a second log entry. Let's walk through this one. First, the timestamp of the event tells us that it occurred on October 23, 2023 at 11.47 and 52 seconds. The keyword deny follows, indicating the outcome of this firewall rule processing. In this instance, the traffic or data packet did not meet the conditions set to permit traffic by the firewall's rules, and the firewall denied that traffic. It did not allow it to pass through. Next, we see that this entry is also for a TCP packet, and the source IP address for this packet was 10.0.1.52 with a source port of 49.123, another ephemeral port. The destination IP address is the same as the previous example, 10.0.2.30, but the destination port is different. This one is on port 80, which is for unencrypted web traffic. It looks like our rules were set to only allow encrypted web traffic, so we're blocking connections on port 80 while we're allowing connections on port 443. Next, we have rule name HTTP inbound, the identifier of the firewall rule that was triggered. This rule, as its name suggests, specifies conditions for inbound HTTP traffic, which in this case, the firewall was set to block. This data packet size is 1,500 bytes. Finally, we see the TCP flags. Here, ACK NO signifies that this packet isn't acknowledging the receipt of another packet. SYN YES indicates that the packet is attempting to establish a connection. It's part of the initial handshake in TCP communication. And FIN NO tells us that the packet isn't trying to terminate a connection. It's part of a communication setup. That's how we analyze firewall logs. This is an extremely important skill for cybersecurity analysts, so I encourage you to get your hands on some log entries from your own environment and try your hand at figuring them out. I hope this video helped you better understand firewall log analysis. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more IT certification content.